Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. It is great to have you connecting with us today. You are really welcome and especially welcome if you are new to the church uh, and joining us for the first time. Today we've got a great service lined up for you. A little later on I will be talking um, about one of the characters of the Old Testament. Nat will be doing our bite size as usual and Mark will be leading our prayers. But before we get on to that, I've got a question for this one just here. Miriam, since we last did this, you've started school. Can you tell me the best thing about school? Um, it, um, breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. I knew it'd be something to do with food. Anyway, Ruth, will you read some verses of the Bible for us uh, to get us into things uh, and then we're going to worship? I will, but first of all, I've got a little bit of Bible trivia for you. So see if you can get this question right. Does anybody know what is the shortest psalm in the Bible? Have a bit of thinking time. Think you know? What do you reckon? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is a great answer, but it's not right for this question. It's quite short. So it's, uh, it's Psalm 117 and here it is. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is faithful, he's full of grace, and we are going to sing about that grace now. So let's sing, This is Amazing Grace. Breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory. The King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King above all kings Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross Oh 
conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Going to be speaking to the grown-ups a little bit about Moses and about his character. So I thought we'd take a look at the baby Moses for our bite size. Enjoy! 
Now the story of Moses is a giant one, but we're going to look at where Moses started off in Exodus chapter two. Now when Moses was born, his people, the Hebrews, were being oppressed by the Pharaoh. Not only were they slaves, but the Pharaoh had made a law that any Hebrew baby girl born was allowed to live, but any baby boy had to be thrown into the River Nile. Now the River Nile is probably quite different from your local river. It can be quite a dangerous place. It is filled with crocodiles. <coughs> crocodiles! In fact, even today, the Nile crocodile is responsible for many deaths in Africa. The Nile also holds massive hippos, poisonous snakes, and rapids. So the Hebrew babies wouldn't stand a chance. When Moses' mother gave birth, by law, she should have thrown Moses into the river. But she couldn't do it. So she hid him. And she hid baby Moses for three months. But after three months, it was getting harder and harder to hide him. So instead, she decided to hide him in the last place that you'd think, on the River Nile itself. So she created a basket, made it waterproof, popped the baby Moses in there and hid him among the reeds on the River Nile. Yet, God kept baby Moses safe. Safe from crocodiles. Safe from getting washed downstream. And safe from being crushed by hippos. Instead, the little basket was found by someone. Pharaoh's daughter went down to a safe spot on the River Nile to bathe and she saw the basket, so she asked one of her servants to go and get it. She saw Moses who was crying and felt sorry for him. This is a Hebrew baby, she said. Now Moses' sister had stayed by the Nile and was watching what happened to her little brother. She quickly went over to Pharaoh's daughter and asked if she should get a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for her. Pharaoh's daughter agreed and so she got Moses' mother to care for him. When he was old enough, Pharaoh's daughter took the child as her son. He lived with her in the palace and she named him Moses because he came out of the water.
in our daily messages this week, we've been thinking about hope and light. Hope and light. The scriptures say, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So hope is a really important thing. And the scriptures also tell us that Jesus came as a light in the darkness. Though we didn't understand that light coming into the darkness. The scriptures also tell us that light and darkness can't fellowship together. So in our prayers this morning, I want to hold those two ideas together. Hope and light. Hope and light. Let's pray together. We hold our nation before our God at this time. For all those feeling anxious and unsure about the future. For those grieving the loss of loved ones. For all those endeavouring to go about their daily work with restrictions. For all those struggling with the withdrawal of many of the civil liberties we take for granted. For those who struggle with the fact that church, church buildings are closed. Lord of hope and Lord of light, we pray that you will touch the lives of all those affected in our nation. For our government leaders, for our national leaders, politically and religiously, we pray that you'll strengthen them and sustain them. Lord of hope and Lord of light, touch their lives today. We pray for our own church family at this time. Especially we pray for Eileen Porteous following the death of Owen. We thank you for his long-lived life, for a life well-lived. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will reach out to all those affected by Owen's death and bring hope and light to them. We thank you for the great hope that we have in Christ. We take a moment just to hold before God those people that we know and love who we think particularly would be blessed by an encounter with the living God today. Just bring them before God now. And as we name them in our minds, we pray, God of hope and God of light, that you will fill their lives today with your life-giving presence. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to meet online. And we thank you, Lord, for the reach of our online services, for those who are part of our church family who are watching me now, and for those who are just watching and wondering what St Peter's Baptist Church is like and is all about. We pray, uh, grateful Lord, for the reach of your love and for this opportunity that we have through this online gift to reach into people's minds and hearts with your light and your hope. We pray for our city and especially we pray for the 96% who don't do church, who aren't following you. And we pray, God of hope and God of light, that you will shine 
into their lives. Open their eyes. Help them to see the futility of life without God. And now as we gather around your word, we thank you, Lord, that we can do that. Thank you for your written word, for the way that it informs and stretches our mind. And uh, we pray now for Andy as he uh, talks to us about Moses. I pray that you'll give us the courage and the humility to take hold of uh, biblical truth and to put it into practice in our daily lives. For we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're carrying on with our sermon series on characters of the Old Testament. And the character that I've chosen to preach on uh, in this series is the character of Moses. Moses is one of those giants of the Old Testament, or of the whole Bible really. Uh, one of the big names, isn't he? When we think of Adam and Eve, we think of, of Noah, we think of Abraham, we think of Moses, and we think of Jesus. Uh, the, one of the big names, one of the important people. Uh, and I want to have a look uh, a little bit about what he did, but more importantly, who he was, what his character was like, why he he was he is a relatable character to us. I think sometimes we can consider characters, particularly in the Old Testament, uh, as so distant in the past that how do we relate to them? Uh, they're just this big name uh, and feels a little bit like a myth, really, uh, rather than a relatable figure. But I think that Moses is a relatable figure uh, for us and as some, somebody who we can take a look at uh, and gain an understanding of his character. And as we understand his character, um, and what God did with him, I think we can understand a little bit more about ourselves. So that's what, what, what I want to do this morning. I think it's really important that we don't underestimate the potential that each of us has in Christ Jesus. That we don't underestimate it. We don't write ourselves off. We don't think, why me? Why should I do this? Why are you asking me to do this, God? I couldn't possibly. And this is one of the things that Moses does. And yet he steps up. And we're going to learn a bit about that. So as we go through these uh, these scriptures this morning, I'm going to be looking a little bit uh, from uh, Exodus 3. Maybe consider that. Don't underestimate the potential you have in Christ Jesus. So Moses, this character, is bringing in a new stage. God is going to use him to bring in a new stage, another fresh start in some respects. We see uh, a fresh start with Noah. We see a fresh start again uh, with Abraham. And now we are building on what Abraham has started. We're bringing in a new administration, a new way of being. Uh, maybe we can draw one or two parallels a little bit uh, with uh, the change of president in the United States. Uh, there is a new administration, a new way of being. Uh, and actually ushering in here is going to be like a new constitution, a new law. Uh, that's what God is going to use Moses for. Uh, it's a massive step change. It's a big development upon God's missio day, his plan, his big plan to bring all people back to himself. This is an important stage of development and growth uh, and a new step in bringing uh, boundaries uh, and laws to that covenant relationship that's already been built due to Abraham. I want to read uh, a few verses uh, from Exodus 3, but before we do, let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for Moses and what we can learn from him as we set out on a course of digging into his story, digging into his character today. Will you bless us with better understanding and how we can relate to this giant of the Bible? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Exodus chapter 3 says, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw 
But though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, flowing with milk and honey and home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you uh, that is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. An amazing section of scripture. And then we go on and uh, learn a little bit more about how Moses is to go uh, and bring this message. We go into uh, chapter four and we see Moses struggling, uh, saying, well, why should I do it? Uh, and how am I going to do it? I'm not eloquent. Uh, I'm not a good speaker. Please send somebody else. He's wrestling with God. He doesn't want to do what God is asking him to do. I should imagine that he's worried, he's anxious, nervous. How on earth am I, Moses, going to do this? And yet God, despite being angry, it says, with Moses, he helps him. His brother is to help him. It's a fascinating section of scripture. It's a fascinating uh, part of the Bible. And we see Moses coming from this place of timidity, of anxiety, and gradually moving forward in his character development. He picks up and he becomes this bold and courageous leader of the Israelites. What an amazing story. So let's learn a little bit more about Moses uh, and Moses' character. He had an amazing start to life, didn't he? Uh, being born to Jochebed and Amram, uh, who were both of the tribe of Levi, when the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. Uh, and uh, he, had, he was the youngest of three children, had an older sister Miriam and an older brother Aaron. He was a special baby but was born at a time when Pharaoh had become uh, angry uh, and anxious uh, about the Israelites and he had ordered all new baby boys to be killed. Uh, and so his mother, wanting to protect him, uh, hid him for three months. But when she couldn't do that anymore, we know the story of how she built this little boat and put it on the river and hid him in the reeves. Uh, and how Pharaoh's daughter came along and found him uh, and decided to look after him. And after it had been weaned, uh, she brought him up uh, in the royal palace. He was born of royalty. It's an amazing story, isn't it, of, of these uh, beginnings. But always uh, Moses knew who he was and he knew that he wasn't an Egyptian. He knew that he was an Israelite. He knew that he was a Hebrew and that was really important to him. This passion about um, being a Hebrew 
led to one of Moses's biggest mistakes uh, um, where he killed somebody. Upon seeing uh, a Hebrew slave being beaten, he stepped in uh, and he killed the man who was doing it and he buried him in the sand, which turned out not to be exactly the best cover up job uh, because the next day uh, another Hebrew slave called him out on it. He knew fear in his life. Uh, the fear of Pharaoh being angry, finding out about this act that he had done, this appalling act of murdering somebody. Uh, and uh, he ran for his life. He ran out into the desert uh, where he uh, got married uh, and uh, lived for 40 years. Before we get to this part of the Bible uh, that we've just been reading in, uh, in Hebrews 3, talking about how God called him to step up and how he was afraid, and how he didn't want to do it, but how he then found the courage and the strength in God to do so. So although Moses knew fear, and he was afraid, and he was anxious, and we can see that in his response to God uh, through uh, Exodus 3 and 4, he turned into this courageous leader who stepped up, who recruited his brother to help him, and he stepped forward. And he led the Israelites out of Egypt, despite all of the difficulties of the, uh, the ten plagues uh, and the challenges of, uh, of going up to the Red Sea and trusting God. Uh, he was courageous and he said to those Israelites, do not be afraid, stand firm for you will know the deliverance of the Lord today. And he also said to them, that the Egyptians that you see today will never be seen again. God parted the Red Sea. Moses led those Israelites through the Red Sea on dry ground uh, as he trusted, as he was faithful, as he was a courageous leader. And some of Moses' great uh, character traits led him to that, that ability to be a great leader. He looked within and although he found that anxiety there, he also found courage. Courage uh, and bravery isn't doing things with the absence of fear. It is doing them despite fear. And Moses did that. He was courageous. He was brave and he led. And that authentic leadership of courageous and courage and bravery uh, are hallmarks of the true leader, which Moses was. And where did that courage come from? That courage came from his closeness to God, his closeness to him. He spent 40 days uh, on the top of Mount Sinai where he received the Ten Commandments, spent 40 days with him. He was close to him. He knew him like many others uh, didn't. Uh, he knew him well. Uh, he was close to him. He spent that time with him uh, and in many ways he intercessed between God and the people, uh, being in the middle, uh, being the intercessor uh, to allow things to happen. He knew God and that example of courageous leadership out of knowing God and knowing him well is an important lesson to us all. The deeper we go with God, the more courage we're likely to have, the more courage we're likely to have will lead to uh, fruitful service of God. For 40 years, Moses trusted God uh, and was close to him and spent those 40 years leading with courage and determination. And although he messed up, uh, which disqualified him from entering the promised land, uh, he was close to God and he led with those instincts um, of courage and bravery uh, and relying upon those personal character traits of responding to situations around him. Uh, he was reactionary in some of the things that he did uh, and did things too quickly. I think that was one of his normal character traits. Uh, I think we see that with the intrigue that he had, with going over to look at the, the burning bush. Uh, he was interested in things. He was inquisitive and that led him into trouble at times because of his reactionary nature nature but he worked with his own issues in that way uh, and led uh, well despite 
the issues. He was human. Uh, he had that f a human f um, frailty, fragility, uh, but uh, he led in an amazing way. And he uh, is described so beautifully in Hebrews 11, in that hall of fame, in that hall of faith that we read in Hebrews 11. Uh, let's read some of those verses now. So Hebrews 11 speaks of Moses and says this. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward and by faith he left e Egypt not fearing the king's anger he persevered because he saw him who was invisible there is a saying that reputation is what people think about you but character is what God knows about you God looks further than the outward appearance. It says in 1 Samuel that God looks further than the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. And here we know something of the heart of Moses. He was faithful. He was courageous. He was brave. He was reactionary uh, and, and made mistakes. Uh, and he was human. He wasn't this myth, uh, this legend but a real person doing real things, messing up, but being given that second chance. Uh, and, but we can see certain things through these words uh, in Hebrews that are really important to learn. So there are a number of words in uh, this section of scripture that I'd just like us to pause and have a quick look at. So firstly, the word faith. Moses had great faith, as we have already said. Moses uh, refused, it says refused, refused to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to do what was wrong. There's another character trait that we must learn from Moses to be determined to say no at times and stand up and be the people who we really are. He chose, he chose God's way to say that God's way was the right way, despite it being difficult, despite him not really wanting to do it, he chose it. We have to make important decisions every day. Let's be like Moses and choose God's way. Let's find out what he wants and choose. And choosing comes from discernment, or the word in this section of scripture is regarded. He regarded what God was asking him to do as all important. He discerned that it was all important and that enabled him to choose. And he had vision. He looked ahead, it says here. In these verses he looked ahead to see what was to come he had vision Moses was a man of vision a man of faith and a man of discernment and good choice we need to have those characteristics and learn from Moses in those ways uh, to be able to put into practice in our lives those things that God wants us to do so here's the thing here's the important thing God didn't change Moses' character to, so that he would become somebody completely different. God took Moses and he moulded him uh, and shaped him, but taking all of his strengths and weaknesses uh, that he had and used them for his purposes. He didn't completely take one person and change them into another. And he doesn't do that with us either. God, through Moses, teaches us a lesson of how we are to regard ourselves. I said at the beginning that I think we can massively underestimate the potential that we have in Christ Jesus. Because through him, he can give us amazing strength to become somebody uh, who can achieve great things for him. But God did not make a mistake when he created you, when he knitted you together in your mother's womb. He didn't make a mistake. And although over time uh, he can teach us, he can discipline us, he can um, shape us uh, and form us, 
the intrinsic character of who we are stays largely the same. Now, I know that he will give us spiritual gifts. I know that when we come to faith, we die to the old self and become a new one. But those character traits are still often within us. And although we press on for maturity, that maturity is often about controlling the elements of ourselves, those bad character traits that we're not so proud of. Moses was reactionary and he made mistakes. He murdered somebody uh, and he was disqualified from entering into the promised land because of mistakes that he made. He wasn't taken and turned into a perfect person uh, uh, to uh, lead the people out of Israel, but took all of those strengths and weaknesses and despite them, God used them beautifully. What I want you to know today, looking at Moses's character, is that God didn't make a mistake. He loves you. You have huge potential in him if you will do some of the things that Moses did. Have faith. Have great faith. Have courage and bravery. Choose to follow God's way. Step away from doing the things that are wrong. Find what God wants you to do. Have vision and press ahead. And allow God to accomplish through you those great things that he has planned for you. Because I believe that he has great plans for each and every one of us. Moses is an example, is a great, we won't all be a Moses, but we can all accomplish great things through him who gives us strength. God strengthened Moses in an amazing way. And Moses' particular job was to lead two million people out of Egypt and to bring their deliverance by uh, moving them towards the promised land over 40 years. And he accomplished his job even though he didn't see the last bit of the story he was a good and faithful servant he is listed in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11. Let's learn from Moses let's be a little bit like him and be encouraged by what God will do when we allow him to work through us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Moses. We thank you for what we can learn through him. We thank you that we have such potential because of you, because of your love, because of your plans. Today, we pray that you will infill us with your spirit. Give us courage. Give us determination. Develop further faith. Lead us into maturity. Allow our character to grow so that we may represent you really well. Give us vision for what is ahead. Let us understand your will for our lives, Lord. And may we uh, see the potential we have in you. And may we accomplish those things which you have intended for good for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me.
So God has a great plan, perfect plans for each one of us as we trust in him and as we know our identity is in him. So let's close our service in the usual way by saying our usual closing prayer. Uh, let's say this together. Loving God, as you send, send us out into this, this broken and fragile, fragile world, world help us to trust the Father, Father to receive the Spirit, and to tell the stories of Jesus. Amen. Bless you all. Please remember to join us for virtual coffee now. The link will be in the chat bar. Uh, thanks so much for joining us this week. We will see you soon. God bless.